I'm Pickle Rick! I'm Pickle Rick! Alright friends, and so if you haven't picked up on the hints yet, today we'll be doing Pickle Rick from Dry Hackney. Now this is a beautiful packaged machine. I wouldn't really call it an easy machine. I'd actually call it a super easy machine. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. That being said, it's a very nice gentle introduction for people that are just getting started with CTFs because it gives you an overall idea of the structure while not being too technically demanding. In the CTF, we'll discover a website. On the website, in different places, are strewn about different pieces of valuable information, which we can then use to log into a portal page we found using GoBuster. So once we've logged in, we can see we're able to run commands on the web server from the actual website. Now we can obviously use this then to get a reverse shell and land on the box. And once we're on the box, we'll discover a serious misconfiguration with sudo, which allows us to basically immediately become roots. Right guys, enough with all this flippin' dilly dallying. Let's, Let's get, get to it. it. All right, friends, as you can see right here, I'm on the Try Hack Me page, on the Pickle Rick page, and I've already spun up a machine. We can see the IP address right there, and I just wanna take a quick moment to basically just orientate ourselves and see that, you know, they're basically asking for three ingredients in the CTF, pretty much equivalent to three flags. You know, it's just different nomenclature, really. So ultimately, we're trying to find three ingredients or three flags in the CTF. Okay, great, so let's jump into our terminal. Great, so in the terminal, the first thing I always like to do is just ping to make sure we're actually connected to it, and we are, great. Uh, so before we get going, I'm just going to make a directory. I'll call it pikuru, and I'll cd into pikuru. So as these things go, let's run nmap. I'll enumerate for standard versions, as well as run standard scripts. And we'll output, and I'll simply call it nmap.results. And I'll paste the IP, and we can go. A few moments later. And we can see here we have port 22 SSH as well as port 80 HTTP open. And we have kind of a funny title here. Rick is super key. But other than that, not all that interesting. So let's just head on right over to the website. Okay, cool. So we find this fun landing page. Uh, Rick is clearly running away from the villainous villains. Right, so next thing, as we like to do, let's just have a quick look at the source. I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. And we can see here the same commentary. Great, and so very fortunately, Somebody just left the username right there in the comments on the HTML. How fortunate. And we can see the username is using lead text and the username is Rick Rules, which sounds an awful lot like Rick Rolled. Great, so let's obviously note that down. And other than that, uh, we can kind of perhaps guess uh, that there might be a robots.txt. Let's have a look. And there is, and it says, Cool, so that could either be maybe a password or maybe it's just the nice cute little Easter eggs. Nevertheless, we'll write that down along with Rick rules. Da -da -da -da. Great, so right now there's nothing else obvious here. So let's jump back into the terminal and run GoBuster to see if we can discover any hidden directories or files. Okay, so back in our terminal, let's run GoBuster and we're gonna be busting down directories. And then here with you, we can specify the URL and it's going to be 10, 10, 72, 217. Obviously yours will be different. W to specify the word lists. And we will be using sec lists, discovery, web content. And we'll use raft, medium, directories, lowercase, at the same time, let's also look for PHP and text files, not just directories. And then finally, I want to just save the file in case we wanted to refer back to it later. And I'll save it as gobuster.results. Let's go. And we can pretty much immediately see a login.php. So I'll just minimize this window and keep it running. But why don't we just immediately go and check the login.php out? All right, so I'm back on the page and we can add login.php there. We can see a portal login page. You get it, guys? Portal login page. <laughs> it's pretty clever. Okay, cool. So there's a login page here. There's obviously a few ways we can always try to get into a web server. And, you know, we could potentially run something like Hydra and try to brute force. We could try a random username and password, save the login request with Burp Suite, then feed it into SQL map to see if perhaps it's vulnerable to SQL injection. Uh, but right now, 
seeing that we already have a username and we have this word wubba lubba dub dub that could potentially be the password this is the lowest hanging fruit let's try that um, so i'm just gonna copy and paste it in here and let's see wonderful and we immediately see a command panel which once again is incredibly convenient because what this is let's see is this is basically allowing us just to run <laughs> commands directly on the web server right now uh, so we can see we're basically in the web server directory we can see where the user that's classically associated with the web server um, and then let's see what's actually in the folder we're in oh, okay great so right here there's two things there's a clue.txt which is quite interesting and then here it seems might be our very first ingredient so i'm just going to copy that uh, let's cat it out okay so they're not allowing us to cat but let's see if they allow us to head they don't allow us to head either let's see if we can run less -na -na -na. great <laughs> so we have our first answer uh let's just go drop this in there Woohoo! okay so whenever you see any ability to run commands directly on a web server or any box that you'd like to get on there's a very clear and obvious path forward and that path is we create a netcat listener on our own system and if we can then execute a reverse shell command on the system we'd like to be on it'll call back to our netcat listener create a reverse tcp connection and then we are effectively on the box right and so as i shared before i'm a big fan of revshells.com uh, and the reason simply being is it basically gives me access to all these different type of rev shells. I can change the actual shell I want to spawn. I can add encoding. Um, I can neatly insert my IP and port number into the script without needing to change it myself later. We're just another chance for errors to creep in. And so you can see there's a huge different variety and you know, some of these will work, but not all of them will work. And so, you know, typically if we think of a web server and some of the things that run there, uh, we might want to try something like a netcat shell curl shell uh, at the same time i find i have a lot of success actually with the python shells so let's look at for example this one and the only thing is the only way this would not work on the target web server is if python was not installed on the target web server uh, so let's just head back here quickly and so to see whether or not python is installed on this target system we of course can just run the which command so which python 3 and it shows us there is a Python binary right there, meaning, of course, that Python is installed on the target system. All right, so we head back to Rave Shells. The next thing, of course, is we need our own IP. So let's jump back into our terminal. So, of course, we can just run IPA and we can get our IP right there. And so I'm just going to copy it. We'll head back to the website. So right here, we just replace that with our actual IP. Just for funds, I'm going to choose the lead port. Right, so our script is pretty much ready. And now all we need to do is hit copy right there. Let's head back over to the website. And now I'll paste it and we'll run it. Right? Right? I think we're forgetting something. Right, so right back here. Of course, we need a netcat listener to catch the incoming connection. So I'll run netcat, LVNP, and lead it up, bro. Okay, so we're listening. Let's head back to the site. Let's execute. And typically when it hangs like this, that's a positive sign. Let's head back. And we can see right here that indeed we got a reverse shell. Hooray. So we're on the web server. We know we're www data. So let's go ahead and see what is going on in the home directory. All right, so we can see users, Rick and Ubuntu. Ubuntu is usually associated with the actual web server. So that's not that interesting. Obviously in this case, the Rick user is more interesting to us. Uh, so let's see if we can read what's going on inside of his home directory. And we can see right there, there's a file called second ingredients. So let's actually go ahead and see if we are able to read it. Uh, and we are, excellent. So we should just be able to cat out home rick and now be very careful because there's a space which is a no-no right and so we got to hit our backslash to escape the space and then we can write ingredients and it's one tier of jerry poor jerry right so we can just simply drop our second ingredient right there one jerry tier thank you very much let's go
All right, friends, and so there's obviously one ingredient left, and I'm gonna take a pretty educated guess here, and I'm gonna say that third flag is most likely in the root directory. We most likely cannot read that root directory right now, but then if we're able to escalate our privileges and become roots, we'll be able to find the final flag. So once again, I say this in almost every video, but if you've never done any Linux privilege escalation, then I really recommend you to do the modules on Try Hack Me, or also TCM, the Cyber Mentor. They have an excellent like 10 hour course on that. Uh, but just so you know, there's always a handful of things we can immediately look at to see if perhaps there's a very easy way to escalate our privileges. So for example, in Mr. Robot, we looked at the SUID bits on binaries and we saw that it was set on Nmap and we could have used that with some advice from GTFO bins to elevate our privilege. Now this time I'm gonna try something else, something other than SUID bit, and we'll run the command sudo l. Now I'm sure you already know what sudo means, but when we run sudo l, it's basically gonna give us a list of all the commands the current user, i.e. the user we are right now, can run with sudo privileges. So let's just run that. <laughs> and we can see um, what I like to term the mother of all misconfigurations. Because effectively, friends, it's telling us right now, we can run any command on this system as the current user using sudo without needing to provide a password. And so because of that, we can literally just write sudo su and become root. And we can see there, of course, we're root. So let's just go to the root folder. Let's look inside of it. We can see third.txt. And so let's just cat out third.txt. And it's Fleeb juice, of course. So one final time, let's head back to the website. And we can drop the final ingredient right there. Woohoo! We did it, guys. We actually did it. And of course, this is the best part. Because now, it's time for the victory dance. So please, please get up right now and join me for the victory dance! Alright friends, that's it for this week's walkthrough. Please keep an eye out for another CTF walkthrough next week because it will obviously be awesome. But until then, peace out.